Hi guys, so it's a Friday and it's time for another Unraid video. This video is all about three gamers, one micro ATX motherboard and one CPU. What we're going to do is run three games simultaneously and then run three sets of benchmarks all simultaneously on the VMs. Cracky. So when I started this project I had an AMD 6450 as my primary graphics card and an MSI 1070 Seahawk as my secondary graphics card. So the first thing I had to do was obviously move out the 6450 and make a bit of room in there and then I put the Seahawk into the primary slot. And as you can see here putting three dual slot cards into this motherboard was going to be a bit of a challenge. So these were the cards that had to go in there, a 750Ti and also a Zotac 1070 Founders Edition. So I used this PCI Express extension ribbon and fitted it into the case. And then I put the other 1070 card in with the riser just sticking out the top. And this allowed me to have the GTX 750 just kind of sticking out the top of the case. Of course you'd never want to leave anything like that permanently, but as I borrowed a 1070 off a friend, I thought I'd give this a try. Um, I've seen other videos online where people are using like 7 or 8 graphics cards and the system's costing like $30,000. And whilst that's an amazing project and it's really cool to be able to see what's possible to be done, well it's not really practical for any of us to really actually use in our day to day real lives. But it is practical to be able to actually pass through two or three graphics cards and use them in separate VMs for gaming. Whilst you can use a monitor and have separate gaming stations for this, you can also use the NVIDIA game streaming where you can actually stream it to another room, maybe a bedroom or another room in your house. And you can use an NVIDIA shield for that or you can use a Raspberry Pi and set up Moonlight on that or you can stream to another laptop with Moonlight in fact next week I'm going to have a video all about game streaming and all the different ways you can do it um, and also teaching you how to for around sort of $30 be able to build your own game streaming receiver using a Raspberry Pi. Anyway back to this week with the hardware now set up um, it's time to then go into Unraid and set up three Windows gaming machines. So I've already set up three Windows gaming machines here. Um, the first two this one and this one have the 1070 in it and this one here has the GTX 750 that sticks out the top of the case. Um, before we actually go any further I'd just like to show you my CPU pairings and show you how I decided to split up the CPU to be divided between three gaming machines and Unraid. So if we just go across to um, tools and then system devices Here's the CPU thread pairings. Um, I'm lucky enough to have 14 cores in this CPU. As you can see here, I've written down how I've split them up. Um, the top two cores I left for Unraid, as Unraid prefers to use the lower numbered cores. So I left two for Unraid to use. So the other cores here, I've got 12 that I'm using for the three VMs. Um, of which um, each VM has four cores, one of which is used for um, emulation functions which is pinned separately. What I've also done to all of the cores that um, are used for the VMs is I've actually isolated them from the host operating system. So these 12 cores are isolated um, using this code that I put in my syslinux config file. Unfortunately there's not time in this video to go into depth about doing this but I will be addressing it in a future video. If we have a quick look at the first VM here, just clicking on edit, um, if we have a look at the CPU assignments here, even though I said I was going to use four CPUs for each VM, you can see I've only assigned three here. Um, that's because if I, um, you look at the XML code here, 
you'll see here that um, I've put in a function here to um, pin the emulation functions to this set of CPUs here. There's actually three cores here for, um, for this function that is used on every VM that I've put in, so each VM will use these same three cores just for its emulation calls. I just wanted to keep that separate off the cores that are used for the actual VM. And scrolling down the XML file a bit further, um, you'll see here that I've passed through the ROM file for the primary graphics card. That's because I don't have any um, integrated graphics and um, my primary graphics card's in NVIDIA. Um, if you don't know about doing this, then please see my other video about this. So now having briefly told you how I set up the hardware and the software for this project, let's move on to the fun part and see if the actual VMs all run together and actually work. Okay, so I've got three screens set up like this um, for the virtual machines. Normally I just have these two monitors here, but I've borrowed a television from upstairs to use as the third monitor for testing this. So what we'll do is we'll boot up the first virtual machine, which is coming onto the main monitor now. So there's the first VM booted up. Now we'll boot up the second VM with the other 1070. Okay, and here comes the second one. Okay, and there's our second VM booted up. Um, so that's the two 1070s booted up. And now we'll boot up the third VM with the GTX 750 in it. Okay, so that's all three Windows 10 VM started up all with um, GPU pass through. Um, that's all well and good, but let's you know put a game on each one and see if that works. So on the 750, I'm only putting The Sims 4 on. I know it's not a graphically demanding game. And then on the 1070 one, we'll put Crisis 3 on. And on the other 1070, we'll put Metro on. So a bit of a mixture of um, all the sounds from all three games, I'm afraid. Luckily, the volume on the Sims one has turned down. I'm going to find it pretty hard to try and play three games at once. It's probably not going to happen very well. I've never played Sims before. This is the kids that play this game. Okay, so I've no idea how to play the Sims. Um, seems all a bit complicated for me. Okay, so basically you can see all three games are running, they seem to be running pretty well. Um, but as I can't play all three games at once, let's try running three sets of um, 3D Mark all at once. Okay, and so now we'll run um, Fire Strike. So I'm just going to bring up the CPU load statistics, just to see how that looks as we run three sets of 3D Mark all at once.
If you look at the CPU core loads, you'll see as soon as the physics um, tests run in 3D Mark, they shoot right up for each VM. So the scores are all in now. Um, the main score to really look at is actually the graphics score with um, each VM. Um, the physics scores will be a bit low, which will pull down the fire strike scores. Um, there's only three cores running, so we can't expect a really high physics score. Okay, now we'll run the Haven benchmark. Um, all these are just running in the standard settings, all at 1920 by 1080. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the benchmarks now. Okay, so the benchmarks are finished. Okay, so this first score you can see here is for the GTX 750 Ti. Bit of a surprising result there, I think. The main 1070 GPU with the Seahawk got a frames per second of 97.6, while the other 1070 only got 59.1. As you can see here, the um, Zotec card isn't clocked as high as the um, Seahawk card is, but I don't think just the difference in clock speed was. Um, the reason for this result. I think the Zotac card, as it's not liquid cooled and the position it is in my case, um, it was having a bit of thermal throttling. If I was going to set this up permanently, that would definitely be something I'd have to address. So we've done two graphics benchmarks, so now we'll just do an overall computer benchmark on the VMs and we'll run Performance Test 9.0. We can see with these um, CPU tests, all of the three cores are being pretty much maxed out. Okay, so the tests are finished and the results are in. First one is the GTX 750 Ti. 
And this one, the MSI Seahawk 1070. And this last one is the Zotac 1070 Founders Edition VM. Please ignore the disk mark scores in these tests because um, benchmark software can never benchmark VM disks properly. So there we have some benchmarks for three gaming VMs, one micro ATX motherboard and one CPU. And if you like the video guys, then please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, then please subscribe to the channel. And whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, guys, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.